Ivan for inviting me uh, to this uh, nice gathering uh, where we try to tell uh, something about the uh, liquid crystals and uh, optics uh, uh, to the younger colleagues. And so I will try to uh, say a little about the general aspects of the problem uh, of uh, effecting the liquid crystal by the, by the optical fields and then in particular about so-called imprinting and uh, yeah, around this I will say also some words about the defects and the related phenomena which are uh, relevant. So please ask questions if there are uh, something what should be explained more in detail because otherwise I will go fast through. Uh, so uh, but I should say that I would like to thank my co-workers, these are the younger colleagues which are now both German uh, having my uh, PhD with me and uh, they uh, contributed to most of the work which I am going to present. But in part this is also related to the work which is going on in our uh, experimental laboratory uh, in the group of Professor Mushevich and uh, therefore I will show a few things out of this and in particular the connection to the, our uh, modeling and theory. Uh, now the outline of this uh, talk is that first I would like to describe the motivation for this subject and then uh, uh, a little about terminological description of ordering which is needed to understand what uh, is going on in the, this particular <coughs> systems. Then particular effects of field and thermal effects which are needed and then uh, a little about uh, inducing complex ordering in the matrix and this will be transient phenomena and then imprinting in chiral nematics and then uh, a little about uh, rewiring of disclination networks in colloidal systems and then uh, showing how the uh, laser twizzles can be used to uh, modify the disclination loops and that's approximately the problem but it's possible <coughs> that I will skip some of this about the motivation so this phenomenon of printing or effecting the cholesteric liquid crystal you heard about the uh, nematics, cholesterics already substantially, so I here do, do not say again what is their structure and so on, but the motivation is, uh, uh, is beyond what I show here on this display. And this display is showing like a 20 year effort to use the cholesteric display as a kind of uh, bistable display where one can uh, print in and then uh, erase again and but it's not fast but it can usually reproduce colors uh, only in a, a very modest way so the most recent efforts from Fujitsu are showing some color display but it's still a kind of prototype so that means it's not yet the real uh, real uh, e-reader e in the colors uh, based on the cholesteric stabilized system and then these are black and white systems from Ken display and uh, then a kind of signs which are also made of the same and so on is based on the initial efforts from, from uh, Bill Dillon who started this at Kent State University now we wanted to go beyond this because here is just printing pixels but here would like to, uh, we would like, I would like to stress the motivation here is to, uh, to go into more complex arrangement of the uh, either colloidal system or related system where the uh, topological features of the disclination network which is somehow binding the system together is particular and therefore we are talking about topological soft map and uh, uh, the stimulation of these subjects are again coming from experimental labs where 
from Professor Musevich and Professor Smiluk, where they have done a lot of optical manipulation of pneumatic and chiral pneumatic colloids. Uh, and then uh, the other thing is that people also studied a lot of complex optical fields. Yesterday we had a very nice talk uh, from Mark, and uh, then I should mention also Rachele, who worked, who has contributed substantially to optical fields. Uh, now, in printing of uh, metastable states, that's something what was uh, more recently coming out into one, two, three dimensional <coughs> colloidal systems. And now, if the idea is to assemble for him, such a system of more of such elements together into some kind of photonic system. And here are just examples from two recent publications showing some of these, uh, let's say, discrimination networks or complex defect structures. So, now about the pneumatic, you heard a lot, so I, I can go very fast. So, the crucial thing here is the order parameter, which is the measure of the average orientational degree of uh, pneumatic molecules uh, and the uh, other thing which is relevant is that this order in our examples will be either pneumatic or chiral pneumatic so that means that the director which is here in certain direction in space is in a chiral system intrinsically twisted along certain axis and the speech is a characteristic of the system and the length of them are many times in the optical regions. Uh, now the description of this order we also heard on this and uh, here what is important that uh, if you want to have a very detailed, detailed description you need also details of the order on a small scale like defect. And therefore, it's important to mention that uh, in the defects, particularly uh, by axial type of ordering is relevant, and then the decrease of order parameter, and, and uh, the director becomes sing singular, and so on. So that means for the complete description, which is useful for the modeling, is uh, a tensor of the pneumatic order parameter, uh, right approach. And we have also heard on this tensor, and there are this uh, degree of order by axiality present, and then this M, E, E, uh, the two E's are the main uh, uh, matter in the giving the <coughs> frame. While in the eigenframe, the tensor has a very simple description. So the degree of order, and then the uh, variate, uh, very deviation from the degree of order due to the <coughs> So that's something behind. Now, what are the, uh, how is the pneumatic deformed on what scale? So in the isotropic phase, water is a uh, uh, very short range. So we cannot talk about the real water. It's everything on molecular scale. In the pneumatic, we have degree of water and director. But uh, on short range, we, have, we can have variation of the degree of water and uh, and by axiality, while on the longer range we have variations in the pneumatic director. And now uh, we are interested in affecting this kind of order. Now uh, to, do, to be more sure what we will do and what we can do, we must say a little about the defects which we are present in the pneumatic. So we have, uh, uh, these are discontinuities in the director field, and uh, they are accompanied by strong variation in an pneumatic degree of order and perhaps in biaxiality. Then, uh, how defects appear in the system? They appear after, for instance, fast pooling from isotropic phase or going uh, or affecting the system simply by uh, external fields. Could be optical, could be electrical, and so on. Or by confinement. And now we have point defects. Uh, here are two uh, simple examples. Hedgehog and then uh, minus one is the hyperbolic hedgehog. And then uh, we talk the, about the topological charge. So that's something what measures somehow a flux of the director through the uh, enclosed space. 
and thus, uh, in this case, uh, these are plus <coughs> or minus one under convention, which is usually used. Uh, and then, particularly important for further things will be line defects. So these are area, uh, these are uh, curving uh, curves in space. Along them, the director is uh, uh, singular, and uh, uh, the most uh, important are one half destination lines. Here is a plus one half. Presented a cross section so the director goes around it and turns for 180 degrees. And because the director is not a director but is, uh, uh, has no, no direction uh, like polarization, uh, so in this means we are talking about the possible one half defect line. While a typical one defect line is possible on the usual vectorial fields. Uh, while uh, one can see, like, uh, we will not discuss this, that these lines are unstable, they decay either into one half or they uh, become non singular in a uh, third dimension. So, uh, important here is this winding number, which here is one half or one, uh, and also if we make a loop out of our destination line. Then we talk also about topological charge of the loop point is also an important quantity. And now how to present these defects uh, in uh, either modeling or in other presentations. So what we can do is, is to, uh, the, to say something first about the core structure. Core is this area where the director is uh, singular and all the parameter is uh, different from bulk value and as well the biaxiality is present. So here we just simply describe the director field by simple streamlines as I showed before, but then we add additional uh, like a tube showing the area where enclosing the core of the defect. And how do we plot this? We plot this that simply we say, okay, we will plot the area of constant order parameter. And constant means that we choose something what is smaller than bulk. Bulk is here, for instance, in this case was uh, 0.53 or 0.54, while the dec decreased order 0.5 shows something the area of the defect. How large is this area? This uh, size of this area is uh, comparable to the dramatic correlation length, and these are in the uh, nanometer scales, these areas, where the water really substantially uh, deviates from the body. So that means this visualization will be important future. So we don't plot always direct or streamlines, but we many times just simply plot the core of the defect. Then what are important things here is also stability of these objects, but these are energetic questions, questions related to the energy mostly, so uh, uh, elastic particular contribution and also external fields if they are present and then confinement. So these are now general things which we need, but if one wants to, uh, to search for structures, and then uh, one must have uh, a kind of free energy as well uh, to, uh, to do a modeling. Uh, this so-called uh, Phenomenological approach is usually based on so-called lambda of the same type of free energy, which is written here, or a simpler version of frame free energy, which is written here down. So we have, in this uh, more general case of uh, lambda of the gen, we have uh, the usual lambda expansion in the allowed terms of the uh, powers of the order parameter and such is because these are tensors is a more complex products but never the second order, third order, fourth order are relevant more you don't need then particularly relevant for this, uh, the deviations of the order around the, through the space are these gradient terms which are quadratic but here we have a linear one which is responsible for describing the possible chiral uh, ordering, so that means twisting of the cholesteric phase is hidden here, and the inverse pitch is given here in front. So this 
this term is responsible for describing the intrinsic twisting of the system. Then there is a term which couples the surface preferred order to the bulk order, and it just works on the surface. Uh, so it depends now on type of anchoring, and so it's uh, depending on alignment. Then we have a coupling to field. Here we add only electric field. We don't add any any uh, magnetic field. And this uh, electric field will be enough to cover either electric effects or optical effects. Only what is then different is the uh, epsilon. So the, the electric constant depends on frequency. And so uh, this is quadratic term in fields. And then uh, uh, the properties of liquid crystal are hidden in the, the epsilon in this uh, in this uh, the electric constant, so that it can be reasonably well described by a constant term, uh, uh, which is something <coughs> of average plus something what measures the anisotropy of the, the electric constant depending on direction along the field, perpendicular to the field, and this one is proportional to the directly to the order parameter. So we see the coupling of this term to also to the uh, here is the order parameter. So what, uh, that's important. And then uh, many times uh, when you don't have effects, you don't need this complicated description, and then you can reduce this to so-called frank elasticity, which we had at different lectures several times. Here is in a very compact form written this gradient only on the director. But, uh, uh, here we have only one elastic constant, like here we had also one elastic constant. So these are the simplest approaches where we neglect an isotropy and we neglect also this so-called surface elastic constants. So in this simple description, the frame free energy is very compact, one constant. And then uh, we have a term which couples to a, a director to the surface, depends on the type of anchoring. And then we have again the same kind here, this uh, the electric term, which uh, tells us how much uh, the electric uh, free energy is coming into the system. It depends on this uh, anisotropy of the, the electric constant. And then the quadratic in field, and then it's, it's the angle between the director and the field is crucial. Now it's, uh, it should be mentioned that these things can have reverse sign that depends depending now on material properties, but here we don't go into this details. So, uh, uh, the first thing which we would like to describe is the effect of so-called Gaussian beam that we have heard about probably yesterday and before as well. So, and here we have a very simple electric field of a so-called a laser beam which comes in this direction and is polarized orthogonal to the our uh, in one direction, so it's a polarized light. And uh, but the profile <coughs> is not the, uh, the uh, plane wave, but it has a kind of uh, profile where it's the highest intensity in the area, and then it spreads up again. And that one is this, uh, described by this uh, Gaussian function here, where, whether you have uh, time dependencies and phases, and this is also the phase term, this as well. And then we have the field in front, and, and then how this uh, width here is derived by W, which is a called of waste. Uh, and, uh, and the radius of waste, waste is then related to this measure and this quantity which measures uh, the properties of the details of the beam. So this is a simple formula which is certainly a very uh, crude approximation but it gives you an approximate description of such a beam which has intensity the highest here, then decays uh, uh, in a longitudinal direction and red, uh, in transverse direction as well, in both directions. So, uh, and how such thing affects the pneumatic which is confined in such a cell. So, uh, strong anchoring on both sides, and then a field which is uh, such that it goes beyond the so-called free-dextralization. 
you heard certainly on previous translation. So it's some uh, critical field needed that you break this uh, nice homotropic arrangement of the In this case, this field should be this value is the field or in the power of the laser beam uh, is uh, corresponding to some milliwatts where one can make a change. For a typical liquid crystal, and here are the parameters of our beam. And here, what is here changing is uh, where is the center of this waste. Here it's coming from this area, and then it goes through. And then we see that the shape and distribution of the perturbance is changing, uh, depending where the waste is centered. Now, that is a effect, a kind of optical induced phase transition. If beam is strong enough, and strong means that it must overcome this uh, elastic barrier uh, to turn the field from uh, homotropic to tilted or more tilted, depending on strength field. If what is important that in the lateral direction, the perturbation of the order parameter dies out very strongly. And that's a kind of exponential decay. We talk about the screening of perturbation of the order by this confinement. If you would do this pretty extensive in bulk, then things would spread further. But because of these constraints on two surfaces, they uh, more uh, more concentrate. Now, what is important that uh, you <coughs> have, uh, if you go into detail, see that there are more possibilities how you distort the world. So we had this uh, local distortion was like that. Parallel in the central part, then it deviates to the, toward the uh, value of, toward these values which I showed here on the surface. Now it goes this direction, this direction. So this, but it can happen that one can have a tilt in this direction here, up and tilt up to this. This has higher free energy, so definitely it's a lower energy state, but that's also a possible one, but metastable. Then there are more possible states when you have some defects here or here, or even four possible defects. So there are more possible states which can be excited even by a simple Gaussian beam, but here I have no time to go into details. Uh, now, if we want to go further to more really uh, beams which can induce more defects and more uh, crucial dependencies, are so called Laguerre Gaussian beams. In the, this Laguerre Gaussian beam, we heard yesterday, it's important that it has this Laguerre function here, which has an azimuthal, uh, azimuthal modulation also of the laser of the laser of the electric field and also radial. So here are some profiles shown. So we have here a simple Gaussian beam. It, it have here just the vector polarized locally in one direction. The whiteness means strength of the field. And here if uh, the L1 beam means that we have a circular uh, electric field inserting the area of very low field. And here we have the same encircling, but it has additional <coughs> azimuthal modulation. So obviously electric field is more complex here. And here add three even more. And all this is a here that can be imprinted in our pneumatic. So if we put the pneumatic in the Gaussian beam, we have this uh, here uh, locally ordered, and in this case we get an, a kind of defect area around where the order parameter deviates. So this is one of the states which I, I showed before. So that's one which has here this uh, defect here. So obviously this is the possibility that it could be created and in, if one checks the, the line, how it looks, this line, this line has different uh, different profiles here. So this line has uh, varying profiles. So it's a minus one half line, plus one half, and the twisted profile. So that means the uh, defect line varies through the, through the space. And if we go to this one, this is this L1 beam, which has a nice uh, concentric 
streamlines of uh, director following the, also the electric field uh, is then a surface again by a defect which is here different here it's uh, a twisted line and it has the constant profile if you go around and then you have additional defect line which has uh, it's orthogonal to the one in the details are here showing here the variable profile of the other parameter and some of these lines uh, uh, which have variable profile have zero charge so that means when you switch off the field what the, you know, here is additional more complex case where you have a higher beam uh, L2, L3 and all this can be done so you imprint uh, you don't imprint, you enforce the ordering which has very specific uh, spatial uh, direct but what you if you switch off if you want perhaps it's what is here to do this uh, particularly you can enhance the effect of the laser if you add dyes to the system to absorb uh, the light and make uh, and hit uh, the rise the temperature of if you rise the temperature means this that the, if temperature is higher elastic constants are smaller so easier to distort so uh, in usual in experiments they uh, add dyes to enhance the possibility to, do, to make a Friedrich transition so here is a, a simulation of such a case so the, this uh, dye can be mostly on surface so uh, on the layer. in this case it's not a dye but it's an ITO layer which absorbs heat and then heat propagates from this area to the inside so it's a stationary uh, heat flow, a gradient in temperature which means that the, order, uh, that the elastic constant has a gradient in space or if we have dye distributed then the absorption is the highest here and then also modification of the uh, elastic constant are the strongest here so this all contributes to the possibility of manipulation but it uh, doesn't bring additional things so that means when you switch off the field, the, this all distorted uh, pneumatic goes back to the homogeneous order. So, but we want imprint, something what stays. Uh, so okay, here is a trial on chiral pneumatic. So again a Gaussian beam, direction of Gaussian beam perpendicular to this oriented pneumatic. And then uh, you see that the distortion is coming in so the pneumatic turns in because the field is uh, circular uh, is in, not circular but is perpendicular to the board and so uh, that means distortion is in this direction so distortion is, in, is induced in the cholesteric as well but when you reduce the laser beam and it goes back so that means here if we go in this direction so it goes back and comes in here so nothing is there but if you use here a more complex L1 a laser uh, laser uh, Laguerre Gaussian beam so we see that what happens they induce a defect, a distortion and finally we get a, station, a sta stable state which has two defect lines here and these are minor one half defect lines here and here and then we have a, a circular director encircling the, uh, the space and this is so called Turon uh, <coughs> which was shown in the first motivation page which was first produced by Ivan Spaniuk a few years ago and here is it just simply we show how this works if one wants to uh, wants to simulate this so that means you have a homotropic cell you add the Laguerre Gaussian beam and you will see how it works so it simply may induce distortion it, it adds uh, disclination lines but finally you get just two disclination lines which uh, are stable so that is imprinting of, uh, of a simple toron, but can it be imprint more complex, but we have no time, we must go further. So if we have uh, so-called colloidal systems, there, there are more poss possibilities to play around with the laser twizzles, 
because they can affect also colloidal particle, not only the, uh, the nematic itself. So a simple colloidal particle uh, which has produced homotropic anchoring around uh, here is one stable structure around, particularly for larger particles. Here we have a disclination line, minus one, running around this so-called Saturn ring or quadrupolar structure. And uh, this structure can be seen under the polarization microscope. But what people have observed a few years ago is that uh, laser tweezers can easily manipulate this system. So there are here two cases with low laser beam, a low laser light intensity, high light laser light intensity. In the case of low intensity, the, uh, the laser beam is here, but it doesn't distort the nematic. In this case of the high laser beam, it distorts and makes here a, a picture, a, a sign of a distortion. So that means we have a local free transition here. And in both cases, this trap is uh, attracting the colloidal particle. Uh, why it's attracting, then one must go into details of attraction of colloidal particles toward the laser beam. A laser beam, uh, particularly this gradient uh, area with high gradient, is the most interesting for tracking particles. But I have no time to go into these details. Uh, so that means that there are two ways how one can do this. Again, one can uh, use the same, uh, for instance, this Gaussian beam description, which we had before, and then we uh, go into more details here. Here we have added a small particle, which in this case induced so-called dipolar director field. It, it has a point defect here, and the particle here, the structure is like this. And you have a laser beam here. And then you have attraction between the two. And this attraction is the same if this beam is here or on the other side. Uh, while in the case when you are above the Friedrich transition, that means that the, in this laser area, you induce the distortion. Then things happen in a different way with this direct on which side you are. So that you have an asymmetric, uh, let's say, potential uh, effective potential for it, uh, trapping the particle. And here is then another small catch which should be mentioned that the, uh, uh, catch, uh, laser tweezers are known that they can catch particles which have an index of refraction larger than the, the uh, surrounding media. But in this case, they people used also s uh, smaller indexes uh, than liquid crystal, but there was trapping. Why? because the particle could use around self a cloud of, of oriented nematic which have higher index than the rest of the nematic, uh, particularly in certain direction because the index of refraction is the direction of quantity. And that means that the laser beam can work also with effective uh, coverage of a particle. But I have no time to this. I must go to the idea of this imprinting of changing of the structures by laser beam. So we have here a particular uh, disclination line which covers two different, two different, uh, two different uh, uh, colloidal particles which are uh, everything in a cholesteric cell where we have a very fine confinement so that means the space where few particles are confined is rather tiny and the director turns for 180 degrees in this cell and uh, one see that the two particles are coupled together with a, a kind of complicated disclination line or two disclination lines. But this disclination line have points where two, uh, two lines come very close together. Here are four such points. And at this point, the director makes a kind of crossing, one line to another, which is orthogonal. And what this means, that there is, this is a spot where one could effect by laser tweezers to turn one structure to another. So focused laser beam, here we made just a kind of uh, enlargement of this tetrahedral area of crossing. And here we try to see 
uh, how this can be uh, described uh, sorry, described in, in simulations. So showing the, what we show here is a, a laser beam which is affecting in different directions this crossing and that means that the destination line here changes from one direction to another depending on the laser beam direction and uh, so if I repeat that so that means that one can if that is uh, turned in different direction switch between this kind of coupling this kind of states so that means this small area in each spot here can turn in this way that the disclination can run like that like that or like that so there are three possibilities and this uh, all change the whole uh, shape of the disclination line that we have many possibilities how these two particles are coming more interesting was this uh, related to the larger system where you have a lot of particles like a network so like here is a part of a network where we have an arrangement like a 2D lattice and this clination line is coupling all these uh, uh, particles but there are some spots for instance where we want to change this coupling there to change this network and that means in this spots here we have a end of crossing of two lines here here are three possibilities and these three possibilities again can be here shown as a uh, chain as a reorientation of our tetrahedron area where this clination line simply uh, can be switched how by a defect of laser sometimes they just hit this whole system and wait and then it comes to certain particular state or they use a very particular beam which can induce a particular change so that means by changing this uh, some area like here one can have three different so-called knotted disclination lines so this grain knot, three foil knot or prime link so these are three cases which are simply depending on how here we reconnect the disclination line so that uh, why how one can connect this with this uh, it's uh, need, you need more explanation and there are steps when one can really demonstrate that this what you see here uh, corresponds to this kind of knot or this to this and this to this but I have no time the idea is here is that laser tweezer could be used to rewire the network and then here is perhaps the last example uh, how this uh, uh, Disclination lines or defects can be affected by external field. So here is a, a simple case of this so-called bipolar structure, where we have one particle and we have hyperbolic defect here, and uh, this small defect is here. And our in our presentation where we neglect uh, this clear uh, direct field but just defect, and then the light beam has the focus here. And so enhancing, uh, uh, using the Gaussian beam here with the uh, electric field in this direction, one can follow what happens with such a can can be used by such a laser uh, laser effect. So simply uh, shining in some area here, then turn, uh, uh, dragging the uh, the center of the laser away is simply extending the disclination line so it becomes larger and larger in the modeling we also get to some point then it breaks in the reality when they do experiments it's the same story and this breaks at some moment but then if you remove the, li uh, the, the laser beam then the, uh, the disclination line shrinks back to the initial states because this was a cholesterol uh, simple pneumatic where well, these distortions are not stable, cannot destabilize <coughs> like in the cholesterol. So here perhaps is a little more description here. If one would like to uh, observe this discrimination line here and its profile, you will see that here is uh, uh, 
this uh, one type of profile, the plus one half, minus one half, and then a twisted profile. So that means this line have a change also in the profile along the follow if we follow the the line. So uh, this was just a kind of small illustration of how the light is affecting uh, the details uh, of the line. And now we, I would like to summarize what here I showed or tried to show is that the first uh, example was this simple Friedrich transition by Gaussian beam. And then instead of Gaussian beam using more complex beams which have uh, complicated profile, uh, to induce particular ordering in the first in the pneumatic, we, will, we have seen that this is a transient phenomenon. It disappears when you remove the film, and then uh, uh, the, we have added here information, mostly that if you add the uh, dyes to the system or allows the system to absorb light on surfaces, you can by heating. Uh, uh, enable an uh, easier switching of the local order or, or director because uh, you have weak uh, elastic constant the local temperature is higher. These are smaller changes, few deg uh, one degree or two degrees, something like that. And now if you go to the uh, situation that you imprint things, we have seen that this can be done in chiral systems, chiral pneumatic, you can, uh, with the light induced effect, which will stay. It's metastable, but it can stay or stable, not depending now on conditions. And then in the case of colloidal uh, effect uh, the, on the discrimination line network, we have <coughs> seen that uh, again laser, uh, uh, there are many things. One is laser trapping by, of colloidal particles. I didn't have time to go into details. The other is then the rewiring of disclination networks or even just manipulation of the networks themselves, of the lines themselves. So these were possibilities which I tried to a little address here and that's what I want to say. We started a little late, so is there any questions? between the director here and the polarization uh, 
direction, uh, which is not the electric polarization, but the polarization in this optical microscope, so they are connected because it's um, both are directors. That's what you said. Yeah, a quick question. Um, I was curious if, uh, um, you know, what's the initial diameter of the discrimination loop that seems to appear when you generate color, mm -hmm. color in, in numerical modeling? Uh, is it because, you know, there was this split out the gen paper on how uh, uh, the, uh, no, the energetic, yeah. energetic barrier for generating discrimination loops depending on diameter mm -hmm. and its kind of So can you estimate it? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, here in uh, in the Turon case, which we had here, was uh, the beginning. There was no discrimination, but discrimination was the final state. This one, no, here. So here was no at the beginning. So it's in fact by during the strong enforcing, you create uh, perturbations which are large enough and then when the, the final state is, but now the size of this, how big are you know, the, this radius? If you go to the beginning, there, is, there are lines, right? Yeah. And uh, those are visualizing discrimination. <coughs> yeah, they are discrimination lines, but some of them are not minus one half line. So they are mixed profiles. Uh, so that means uh, this is usually like something after a quench. Yeah, because it looks like there were two loops. Actually. Yeah, yeah, and they reform. So it's certainly it's something what you know, is one must know that this is a, a relaxation based on very simple uh, a relaxation procedure. Could be the real procedure where also Flow is affecting is a little different, but nevertheless, you go through some transient structures, which depend now how will you will enforce the field, how strongly and how fast. Probably all these things matter. Uh, so that means there are many ways which can lead to the final state, you know, like the after quench. So it's very similar, except that here it's induced by the field. In that movie, there seemed to be another loop which disappeared off the left hand side. Is that right, or is there no such loop? Yeah, unfortunately, I do not have the slide here, which oh, well, I, I don't know how to stop this uh, this guy which runs. together and then because the, yeah. if you would observe because here you need more than this simple description which is based on the degree of order you should follow the profile yes yeah. and profile of the loop will show you that it's not uh, uh, there is very twisted profile that it's not a simple one half thing but something else and that means that when the two of them come together they can merge but in general, they cannot if they are well, uh, well, uh, like the final state here. So that means there are possibilities to follow different routes to the same state, because here is just one showing in that situation. And one can also use uh, thermal quench as well. Which leads to some well, thank you very much. I think we should move on. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.